Well, hello, this is Mikhail Golovny, uh, Senior Scientist at Salford Systems. Uh, what I'm going to talk uh, about in this video is how the user may combine the elements of using the GUI and the non-GUI application uh, from within the SPM system. Now, the question of using the non-GUI application is very important because for those of you who either want to work with very large data sets, usually exceeding 200 million data cells for learning, uh, or have to work with other platforms other than Windows, say different versions of Linux, Unix, etc. Uh, for you, the primary mode of application will be working with the command line. Uh, now, the good news is that it's very easy to teach yourself how to work with the command line uh, by using the GUI application on the Windows side. And also, if you're always working with the GUI side, you may also benefit enormously from utilizing some of the elements of the use of the command line uh, processing to enhance your modeling skills and ultimately to improve your productivity. What I have opened on my screen right now is a Salford Predictive Modeler version 7.0, which is about to be released, 64-bit, and GUI application Windows 7. Now when you look into the classic output you'll see that uh, uh, the SPM already has a command line parser built in. Now, and by the way if you don't see the uh, command prompt here make sure that there's a check mark under command prompt uh, placed here. Now this is a fully functional command line meaning I could type in a help command and it comes back, once I press enter, it comes back with the general top level list of all of the commands currently available from within the SPM engine, which includes CART, Mars, Trinet, Random Forest, Rule Seeker, and all these other commands. Then it's being constantly updated and added. Now, you can either work with this help or you can bypass all of the different uh, uh, learning steps by simply working with the GUI engine and checking what kinds of commands the GUI engine produces for you. I mean, in the end, the whole purpose of designing the GUI interface was to help the end user to not to worry about generating all of the commands and instead uh, may, uh, kind of automate the entire process to make it more transparent. What I will do here, just as an illustration, I will first open uh, uh, a simple data set, and it's a, a data set that has to do with modeling uh, spam emails. So all of the emails in this spam-based data set were classified as either spam or no spam. We have a 4601 records, and we're going to start by building a single card model that uses, um, if I sort variables in file order, that uses the target as my target variable. And just suppose, for the sake of an illustration, that I worked for quite some time with the list of these predictors. And I'm not going to use all of the 57 of them, but rather a specific subset of variables. I mean, suppose I may have spent uh, hours of studying and all the different tries and decided that these are the 10 important predictors that I want to use as my final model. So I'm working in classification mode. I'll partition data set into 50% learn, 50% test. I'll impose some limits on the size of terminal nodes. All, all the usual things. I'm not focusing at this point on the specifics of the card engine. I just use it as a, as a simple example. But the critical thing that I want to focus on is that now you have a 10 predictors that you've selected and you want to be used as part of the modeling statement. Now, I can proceed by building a cart model. Uh, at this point, engine generated all of the commands in the background and uh, it produced the results. So I have, I see the navigator file, I can save it as a grow file and so on and so forth. But what is more important to understand at this point is that in order to produce this run, a special sequence of commands was generated by the engine and was submitted to the engine and then uh, uh, it produced the 
output that you're currently seeing on your screen. Now, in order to view the sequence of commands that was generated by the GUI side of the engine, uh, all you need to do is just say file, open, open, uh, it's a view, open command log. See, usually I, I press this button L, but it's not available in the older version, so you have to go uh, to something and view the command log. So when you opened up the command log, it shows you the exact list of all of the commands that were generated by the GUI in order to produce this run. Now you can look inside of this command log and study all of those commands individually. For instance, there is a command called the model command. If you want to learn more about that command, you just type in help model, enter, and then it tells you that the purpose of the model command is to specify the dependent variable. Likewise, there is a command called category that specifies that the target variable, in this case, is a categorical variable, which triggers the construction of the classification tree. Uh, if you look carefully into this list, then you'll find out that you also have a keep command and it looks like that command specifies the list of available predictors. So what I'll do here, I'll go back to classic output, I can type in help, keep, and uh, it turns out that my guess was the correct one. The keep command specifies the list of independent variables. These are the variables that you put check marks on in the model setup window and it turns out that you can easily specify them using a variety of different shortcuts or and there's also all the other things that are available to you by using the non-GUI side of things. Now suppose I wanted to preserve the list of predictors that are used in my current model construction. Well, all I would need to do in this case, I would simply say, highlight this uh, word, uh, the, the set of lines, uh, say copy, then open up a new notepad window by using file new notepad, right mouse click paste this keep statement command, and then save it as a command file and in this case I will call it run1.cmd I already had some run like that from before so I'm going to overwrite it and in this case or let's actually go ahead and save it uh, save as uh, the keep one cmd because this is the uh, list of predictors that I want to be used in my runs. Now, what are the benefits of having this keep1.cmd on your system? The benefits are the following. Suppose you went back to model setup and you changed your list of predictors somehow. Or well, let's say you had a whole new run and that list is now being completely reset. So at this point, you go back to model setup and you no longer see the predictors that you wanted to use. They are either gone or been overwritten or there's something changed. By having access to the keep list saved earlier, you can quickly restore all of the check marks and all of the variables that you used in, uh, previously. And the way to do it is simply open up the notepad window open the keep statement like in this case I have a keep1.cmd so for instance I could always close it at any time then go back to file open open command file find my keep1.cmd open so that I have it in the notepad window and once I have it opened I go back to file menu say submit window and as long as that entire command is being submitted in the background if I now go back to my model setup, what you will see is the exact list of 10 predictors already pre-selected for you. Now, it is an enormous uh, help in terms of working with all sorts of different uh, keep lists because oftentimes you spend a lot of time 
working out all the different groups of variables, types of variables, and it would become very inconvenient to have to enter all of those check marks on the GUI side over and over again every time you want to start the new run with the specific parameters. As you can see, using the command line, you can safely and efficiently bypass all of that step by saving the list of projectors that you're interested in. And it could be more than one, so you have more than one different key place available. And then you open that file, you load it, and once you submit it, when you can safely go back to the model setup and all of the variables that you're interested in are already pre-selected for you. And let me hit start just to illustrate that I will essentially recover the same run that I had before. So that's one important advantage and uh, at this point you learned about the keep command. And by the way, if you look carefully at this command, it spans over multiple lines and the AND symbol in each of the line here, other than the last one, is a comma. Well, whenever engine sees a line terminated in a comma, that sends the signal that the line is not really terminated, that it is going to continue onto the next line and onto the next line, and so on until it encounters no comma, which is a signal that it's a hard termination. That allows you to write individual statements or individual commands that spawn, uh, that span multiple lines, and you don't have to write it in one long line. You can easily fit everything on the screen. In fact, oftentimes you may even have put one variable per line, and that simplifies a lot of the processing that you may find uh, on working with different uh, key lists.